so today we are going to talk about uh, what we are essentially doing in uh, Kubernetes to make it uh, the logs like to make the logs machine readable like right now they are human readable but they are not machine readable so as we uh, take a step forward in the observatory space we need uh, some automation on top of Kubernetes to be able to uh, manage Kubernetes in a better way so this is what uh, we're gonna cover today about what we have done to make it possible. Uh, short introduction about me, I'm Shivanshu, and uh, yeah, so I work at uh, Tetrit, and uh, I've been contributing to WG Structured Logging, which is a part of SIG instrumentation, and yeah, I'm also contributing to Kubernetes and Istio. Uh, yep. If you have any questions, you can uh, reach out to me on Twitter, and yeah, we can talk about and shout out to uh, Patrick and uh, Mark so they have been investing their time uh, they have been editing on few things to make it possible so it, uh, it wouldn't be possible because uh, of these guys I mean if they were not here so we are glad for their help so today's agenda in, uh, involves uh, a brief introduction about what is structured logging and what is contextual logging and then we're gonna dive a bit deep into what we have done to actually achieve this in Kubernetes and then like what are like for Kubernetes contributors what are the migration in instructions for them to actually write code when when they are so as a developer we ignore uh, the importance of logs when writing the code but it becomes a bottleneck when let's say a platform engineer is debugging some things so that's that's why we have created a migration guide so that people can actually use it and then questions are welcome at the end and I would like to welcome the target audience so anyone who is uh, contributing to Kubernetes is uh, is yeah it's <laughs> they're welcome and uh, uh, people who are contributing to logging agents uh, they are mostly playing uh, around the melt data all day long so yeah they are also welcome and users of Kubernetes who are uh, interested in, in uh, managing Kubernetes and they are probably, so for example, GKE or, or any managed Kubernetes solution, you need uh, some sort of automation so that if something goes wrong, like we can do something about it. So that's where end users of Kubernetes are welcome so that they can build something on top of the structured and contextual logs. And it's very good for new contributors to get started because uh, we have a lot of work which revolves around migrating the logs, the existing logs, and then uh, there is beginning a friendly work which, uh, which is very good for new contributors to get started. Um, okay, so what is the motivation behind this? Uh, so I think when Mark started in 2020, uh, yeah, the Kubernetes logs are very messy, <laughs> so they are. Uh, so they are not leading to anywhere it's just uh, some strings which can guide you and you would probably have to navigate through the code base to see okay what's happening and then uh, kubernetes uses klog for logging which is a default logger and it is essentially a fork of glog and uh, so we don't have uh, much capabilities in glog so we we have our separate fork in klog and we maintain it according to our needs in kubernetes uh, there is no easy and standardized log collection uh, designed for Kubernetes. Uh, like people are parsing those log messages, but it's not an standardized way to do it. So, for example, in Open Telemetry, we have OTLP log data model, so which is just kind of a standardized way to collect your meld data. But that's not the case with Kubernetes today. And uh, yep, yeah. so if we want to gain some fine grained information about so for example, if if you have a main function, it's calling maybe thousands of Go routines, and then it is calling, it is spanning multiple routines, then there's a context associated with every thing that's happening. But logs can give you that information, but we need to figure out a few ways to actually achieve this. And uh, yeah, of course, if we achieve this, we can have a easy and, and automated monitoring of logs. Uh, so yeah, that's the motivation behind. So this is like the very basic uh, Kubernetes architecture. We have control pane components, 
we have node components and so as part of structured logging migration and contextual logging migration what we essentially need to do is uh, we need to transform all the code to 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 be able to produce contextual and structured logging and then uh, so yeah so we have done migration for scheduler we have done migration for cube proxy kubelet and uh, yeah things are still in progress and this is like a basic uh, way of collecting logs so you have your container logs and then you deploy an agent and then you probably in the pipeline deploy some parsers uh, to to correlate a few things in your logs and then uh, yeah you you basically store it somewhere and then you show it in the ui so if we are using structured and contextual logging that's like there is a lot of things that we can correlate and uh, we can attach a complete pipeline in this simple diagram in simple flow so that a lot of things that like manually we are doing today can be automated um so we have divided this in two parts uh, structured and contextual part so first we're going to understand on a high level uh, what we are actually doing here and then we going to do like with respect to code what we are doing actually um so the introduction will have this proposal and the deep dive so the proposal is around structured logging is to define a standard structure for kubernetes log messages which is not there at the moment and and add methods to the native logger of kubernetes which is klog to enforce this structure and ability to configure kubernetes components to produce logs in json format so json format we have chosen json format because uh, it's it's very parsable in a way that it's it's a key value pair so so it's the easiest way to to get a structured kind of logs and uh, at the end initiate migration of the current code base to structure and contextual logging so this is an example of uh, of a structured log so in the beginning we have okay it's an info message in the timestamp and we are getting the the line exactly from where the log is coming from so this is the message and then we have key value pairs so we have pod which is name space uh, slash uh, name and then status so this key value pairs can be dynamic can be anything uh, but yeah we'll come to the structure uh, later on the slides so the goal here is to uh, make most common logs more queryable so that uh, we can search for specific things we can correlate a few things and uh, Standardize the uh, log messages and reference to Kubernetes objects. So right now, if we are if if you are contributing to Kubernetes, you know that uh, if you are writing a log, you cannot uh, give a Kubernetes object as a as a parameter uh, in, in in the log. You probably do something pod dot name or something like that. But yeah, with with this, you can actually pass Kubernetes object and it will print out the essential information about it. and for the log structure by introdu introduction of new klog methods so this we, for to achieve this we have to uh, modify modify a few things in our klog uh, fork and uh, simplify ingestion of logs into third party logging solutions so it's it's just like how to consume these logs when kubernetes is uh, producing gbs and terabytes of data then then how like we have done some benchmarking about it so how uh, logging agents can actually uh, get the data uh it's about that and there are non goals here also so we are not planning to remove klog as of now so klog is going to remain there and uh, we we're going to keep using it uh, uh for the functions that we are using today but it's just a uh, additional layer to provide structure and contextual logger logging on top of klog similarly for uh, contextual logging what's the idea so so if you are aware about contextual logging it's it's just like uh, uh so if you have a main function uh, the main function can call a different different functions and then function can be spanning multiple go routines so at the end it's like a tree structure where the leaves you are getting logs but if you don't have contextual logs in the place all these logs going to look alike so you need to pass the context along the leaf from the parent to the leaf so this is how it looks like and then 
the context is also shared between different go routines so that inf information is also important so the idea is to retain the context from the parent to the leaf and the proposal is uh, to replace the the global logger and use logger dot logger to logger to dot logger to and and it's basically provides us freedom to use the the original context and then adding the extended support for k log to to actually use uh, the log log r capabilities to to get the context from the parent so this is a sample log so it's similar to structured log the only difference is here yeah, this four five one eight nine five number it's kind of so if you have used uh, uh, let's say proxy wasm sdk to maybe configure your envoy you might have seen that there's a concept of vm and there's a concept of threads involved there so it's it's similar to that here we are getting the context from the parent there we get to con get the context from the thread uh, and the goals here are to uh, ground the caller the caller of the function means the one who is programming kubernetes uh, control over logging inside that function so so if there's a cascaded function we can pass the context and then uh, the same context can be populated through the leaf and uh, so for example uh, if you want to also check in the unit test what's happening with with the with the complete context uh, we have also added a wrapper on keylog so that in the unit test this functionality can also be tested and a few api uh, changes are also uh, required here which we'll talk in the deep dive and again the goal is not to remove keylog and uh, we are not deprecating keylog as of now so let's take a look into the structure logging so there are few implementation details around uh, like these are the things that we want to achieve we want to have structured log message we want to have references to kubernetes object in in every log we want to have in we want to introduce json output format so so that we can pass it and the logging configuration like json logs are huge they are heavy so if if you don't want it don't use it and there's a performance implication associated with it because right now like we are logging more than we were logging before so we also need to be worried about the performance and then the migration details so let's go one by one on everything so the first thing is about log message structure so the structure is very simple so so there's a cap uh, where we are we, like where we were discussing about the structure and we finalized on uh, this particular structure the structure is simple you just write your log message and then everything which is associated at that particular context can be logged as a key value pair so you, you just have to provide specific keys and spe specific values and the guidelines for that are in the migration guide guide so for example if you in, at some point uh, you need pod so so for example here i have created a sample pod with some name and name space so you can log it in a way that you write the message and then pod status updated and then key as pod and this key object is what we have introduced uh, so it's going to parse pod and it's going to give so we'll come to that part how, how it's going to parse and yeah, so this, basically this is the idea you have message and you have key value pairs and then references to kubernetes objects so for example here we are referencing pod so how, how to actually achieve that the idea is to use kdes native apis first approach and then relate the information uh, and embed that in the k log so for example for k object uh, we have a object reference and the object reference looks like this so in in kubernetes every kubernetes component can be boiled down to either name spaced or or without name space so the object reference is going to give us exactly the the specific details so the idea is to for the namespace object uh, we are going to pass it as namespace slash name and uh, for norm namespace objects we we are just using the name so this is for example cube dns cube system and uh, here it's just a node name the, the cluster name is given there 
So the example is uh, like, for example, we have k object similar to the previous example. And if, if, if there's an error, so we can have a custom message of error and we propagate the error here. And then again, the key value pairs. And how are we going to introduce JSON output format in Klog? So it's about, again, introducing new methods in the Klog uh, logging library to support JSON. And with Klog v2, we can take further advantage of the fact that, that there's an option to produce structured logs in JSON format. There are some pros of using JSON, and there are some cons. The pros are like, it's it's very efficiently efficiently implemented using uh, zap and zero log. And uh, out of the box, like many, many logging backends are, uh, are like can parse the JSON logs. So you don't have to configure any uh, regex pattern or any parser, like JSON logs are easy parsable. So if, if you are open telemetry fan, you can just use file log receiver and with, with a, with a JSON log parser and yes, I mean, all the logs can be passed easily. And yeah, so like for your local debugging, like JQ tools like JQ can help. So this is an example of a structured log where we have the time step temp and then the everything is in, in the key value pair. So the log that we are referencing, referencing to here, it's, it's gonna look like something like this. So we have the pod name and name space and other, other things. So how, uh, like, how we have introduced the, like, this is one another example. So for example, this is a Kubernetes native object, pod is a Kubernetes native object. But let's say if we have something else, so there's a, there's a request and we want to also log that. So we can use custom key value pairs also. So basically the idea in this uh, migration guide is to have standardized key value pairs for K native ob objects. And then you can use your custom uh, implementation and your custom key value pairs for, for other things. So similarly, just like here, like we are logging the pod, here we are logging the request. Uh, in a similar way, other objects can be logged. And then how we actually uh, change the logging format. So if, if, if we do not want uh, this much of log volume, uh, the default is the text-based logging, but if we want to have the JSON logging, we can just configure this uh, flag and it will gonna emit the JSON logs. Uh, the, like, the first benchmarking that we did around this is, so info F is the previous way of logging and info S is the new way of logging. So if you look at the time, that is like uh, nanoseconds per operation, so it's, there's not much difference. There's a slight difference. And again, with number of bytes, there's not much difference. And the CPU allocation, it's almost, is, is exactly the same. So info S implementation for text is 9% slower than info F. And uh, it's roughly takes 2% of overall CPU, CPU usage if you are just logging, if you're not doing anything. So there are user stories around this. So if, if we want to take a look like why we are doing it in the first place. So, so people are using uh, Kubernetes and then they, they are facing hard time to actually debug when random schedulers goes down or a Kubernetes is not responding. So how, how, how do we actually debug it? So like contextual logging plays a big role. So instead of navigating through the code and just looking at the right and just correlating things on your head, you can now use the contextual number to actually correlate by using a software. And that's gonna be very helpful for platform engineers. And the implementation details around is like removing the dependency on the global keylog logger and extend keylog for contextual logging and use migrated structure log and attach context with it. So that's what just we discussed right now. So, so the idea is to, when, when, when we are writing code, instead of using keylog error s, we need to use logger.error. And if, so basically logger, log r dot logger is an instance of, uh, so if, if the log is already migrated to such a logging, we can use keylog dot logger, which is actually an instance of logger dot logger. Uh, so for example, these are the three sample methods that we have. So for example, um, 
I want to retain the context so I can use from context which is internally using uh, log r dot from context so and similarly for the background it's it's received the context related information and then context dot to do is also there so just like uh, using a CTX pa package but but within the context of Klog and uh, here are migration instructions let's take a look at it so so the idea of this migration guide is to so that anybody who is contributing to Kubernetes uh, they can actually refer to it and then if they are writing new logs they can uh, get an idea how to actually write a conditional instructed log and if they are a new contributor who are migrating the old logs to the new logs they also need to refer to this so the so like we have defined uh, everything like what is the what we were previously use, using and then what are the new functions that have been introduced so for example for contextual logging we need to change klog dot rs to logger dot error and uh, we need to use this and function so like I recommend to take a look at this migration guide mm. yep so so what we actually need from you is like we need your help <laughs> so consider a big volume of PRs like there are issues for example we had 16 huge PRs for queue proxy migration and then uh, like for scheduler also we had a lot of uh, PRs the thing is uh, so we have divided it into two phase the first phase is someone from WG structure logging or sync instrumentation reviews the PR and see if if everything is migrated properly and the second part is when the code owners of that particular component take a look and if they want to modify the logs because as the code grows sometimes what we have written earlier does not make sense now it's like it's it's having a, a second look at the at the logs so the idea is uh, uh, people from uh, structured logging group they they just LGTM the PR if it's fine and then the maintainers they have to approve it if it's it's correct and for contributors, uh, we have this uh, WG structure logging channel and we have bi-weekly meeting, please join. And it's very beginner friendly uh, because few things here are like already implemented and the migration part is already, is, is all we need. So it's very beginner friendly. Please join and like ask questions. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> So if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. If I cannot, like Patrick is here, <laughs> he will help me out. So yeah, I think uh, it was not very deep, but like it's, it was like target for new contributors also. And like, it's a, like high level view, but if you want to dive deep, uh, I have links in the slides and I will upload in the, in the session so that you can take a look at like what kind of implementation we have done. And yeah, we can go from there. Yeah, please. Okay, so if I un understand the question correctly, is like uh, in Knative system, we are logging to either the service logs or or the container logs, but it's like dumping logs somewhere and then reading it from there. So there's a there's a lag here. So are you asking if if we're gonna expose some API so that you can directly query uh, logs from Kubernetes API server or or something else? Okay. So, Polly, any plans around that? Uh, I've spoken with the open calendar team folks. I have no luck with them. But in, um, 
<laughs> another way of a good solution. So all of the logic goes to standard error. The container runtime is responsible for handling that. We have to kind of write it to a log reduce because that's part of the Fusion Shadow logs API. If someone uses that and we had written the, the file directly to some logging agent instead, they wouldn't get any output. They wouldn't get any output from kubectl logs. So we kind of have, we would have to do both, log to file for kubectl and write to some agent, but there is no API standardized for that, that I know of. So it's mostly a question also to the SIG node maintainers and container runtime folks, how they want to optimize that. <coughs> I'm also not sure whether there actually is an improvement. Intuitively, you, you think it would be, but if you read from the file that has just been modified, the data will be in the Linux kernel cache. So essentially, your write will go into the cache, it will go to disk, and you read, but immediately it happens because someone is following that file will come from the cache. And the serialization is necessary because otherwise, even if you write through a pipe or something, you need to serialize and deserialize. Even if it's JSON, you still need a byte stream so that overhead doesn't go away. So I'm, I'm not sure how much we can actually gain in terms of performance if we just optimize that data path. It might be worthwhile an experiment, but it will involve quite a few components, container runtimes, so it would be interesting if someone digs in here and reports back. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But I think, uh, like today in a K-native ecosystem, that's what like every agent is kind of doing. Like it's they are reading from the container logs. So we're talking about logs here, but there's other telemetry that the components might be exposing, right? And they're probably exposing metrics. Uh, we're talking about logs, and we're probably, uh, the components are exposing metrics, traces, maybe something else in the future. <laughs> and how are those other signals exposed? And is there a way to converge? Yeah, so so we have SIG instrumentation, which is actually taking care of it. So we, we expose metrics, traces, and events. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are ways to consume it efficiently. So yeah, but this talk was specifically about the logging. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Isometrics are exposed in Prometheus format, right? Or not? I think so. Okay, not the right, <laughs> 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 not, not here, <laughs> not the right question. Okay, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>